We recently wrote some uh, articles on the uh, predictions of what's going to be the accountancy business evolution over the next three years. It's worth going back to those because there's some exciting times ahead and indeed challenging times ahead for Australian accountants. Prediction one, as you can see there, and most of you are probably aware of it, the tax office are hoping that by 2013 that the only people lodging wage earner tax returns will be people who have property income or uh, substan substantial um, share portfolios which might be leading to uh, capital gains tax issues. So what's going to happen in our opinion is there's going to be a shift. Many accountants who currently concentrate on wage earner returns and some of the tax agents will be trying to upgrade their services so that they can add value to SMEs. In a word, competition. Prediction two, compliance tax returns for businesses because they'll become more competitive will become a commodity product. I honestly believe that the challenge for accountants is keeping their relevance as the key advisor to, to business, the trusted advisor, and not be just left with a commodity product. We see the tax return as being part of the overall process that probably shouldn't represent any more than 50 to 60 percent of an accounting business's total income instead of 90, 95, 99 percent as it is in many cases at present. So increased competition, we believe, is going to put pressure on fees. Incidentally, if you've got any questions you want to raise today, can you uh, uh, type in your answer, raise the flag and send that through to us and we will uh, try to answer them uh, towards the end of this uh, presentation. Prediction three, we believe accountants need to offer business advisory services including chief financial officer suite of services because SMEs want additional services from their accountants. As way back as 2004, MYOB conducted a survey as to what SMEs wanted from their accountants. The exact question was, what services would you like to receive from your accountants that you're currently not receiving? And besides the compliance tax return, it covered items like advanced tax planning, future planning, business analysis and interpretation, investment advice, raising finance, succession or exit planning. Now you're supplying these types of services to your, to your clients, information technology reviews. Prediction number four, if accountants don't offer business advisory services, other accountants and business coaches will. There are a large number of coaches and consultants offering their services. Indeed, there's been advertisements in the uh, financial review and in a major New Zealand publication for the last month or so of people offering business coaching consultancy franchises for sale. You've most accountants have probably heard of 10X, which is trying to uh, gain a real uh, foothold in the advisory market space. Some of these consultants are uh, very competent, others might not be as competent. But some of your clients are already paying for their services. A lot of their fees are twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars per annum. In our opinion, the vast majority of that work, if accountants have adequately prepared themselves and coached their team members, trained their team members, given them the confidence to be able to start acting as chief financial officers, that accountants can deliver most of the products that business coaches consultants are trying to deliver. Accountants have worked very hard over the uh, last 30, 40 years to earn this trusted advisor recognition. Shouldn't accountants retain that key recognition from SMEs? That won't occur if the tax return has been reduced to a compliance-like product. Prediction five. Accountancy businesses will offer a full range of commercial services. 
including business health check, which will cover things like key performance indicators, what if, benchmark comparisons, utilising products like Profit Optimizer so that individually tailored reports can be prepared for your clients. Budgets, cash flow forecasts, most importantly, debtors management, business plans, succession plans. We're in an era where there's uh, a um, large um, number of clients who are going to uh, probably retire in the next 10 years, the so-called baby boomers. Is this leading to a uh, large volume of succession planning work that can be undertaken for your clients? What are you doing with family businesses? Leadership. It's gone. <clears throat> so the vision that we see for the future of accountancy businesses is going to be summarised by what we're going to bring up on this slide. Obviously accountancy and tax services, audit, if you're doing audits, are still very uh, important and indeed will be the, the rock on which the accountancy business is still built. Financial planning has become part of the mainstream of products being offered by Australian accountants and will continue uh, to do so. But we believe mainstream accountancy firms, rather than just a couple of hundred around Australia, need to fully embrace the offering of Chief Financial Officer Services. We honestly believe that every SME needs a Chief Financial Officer for some time each week. Think about it. Big businesses have quite a number of uh, highly qualified accountants and CFOs working for them. Small businesses have the same requirements at various times in a week or a month accountancy firms that are geared up to uh, understand their clients' businesses a lot better, who can uh, talk to them about stock turns, debtors' days outstanding, meaningful KPI comparisons, meaningful benchmark of their businesses against other businesses, are the sorts of services that the MYOB survey um, in 2004 clearly established that Australasian um, SMEs are looking for. Strategic management consulting at a higher level from the CFO and probably not suitable for all of your team but definitely suitable for partners is to become an effective executive director of clients. Running small businesses is a very lonely affair. Those of you who have actually run small businesses will know that. It's lonely, lonely enough running an accountancy business. How do you think your clients get on? They're looking for people who can guide them and help them to achieve their strategies, their plans, their vision. There is a real opening for strategic management consulting services. And frankly, if you don't supply it to them, other consultancy organisations will. What qualifications have those people got? What knowledge have they got of your client's industry or business? No one really knows. Now some of those people are very competent and very capable. I know quite a number of them myself. But there are others who are not as competent or as capable. But let's get back to the business side of this. These clients are yours in the first place. And we believe that you should be fighting to have your clients recognise your ability to uh, produce the services and products that they're looking for to help them in their business journey. Business advisory services is the other new area that we're talking about today uh, that uh, needs to be uh, offered to your clients and we'll go through in a bit of detail a little bit later on today as to what we're including under that general heading business advisory services. At this stage, let's say, it is nothing to do with compliance work. ESS Biz Tools uh, is uh, concentrating on um, 
non-compliance work as a service to its clients. So how do you go about implementing a business advisory services strategy? Because that's the purpose of today's discussion. Where do you start? Because I had uh, current uh, subscribers to ESS Biz Tools coming to me and saying, there's a wonderful array of material in ESS Biz Tools, over 400 papers, PowerPoint slides, seminars, but how do we put it into a program that we can use it to deliver business advisory services? So we've div divided that into three sections and today you're having an overview of the introduction. This is the material that we believe accountancy businesses should be considering when they are making up their minds whether they wish to embark down this path. So first of all, we think partners obviously should be signing off on a strategy. Now you can either do this internally and have one of your partners or a senior manager undertake it, or as most firms are starting to do, you employ a consultant or an external organisation like FMRC Smithink, 2020 Asia Pacific, Towers Business Development, our consulting company, uh, or the, uh, the Nixon Advantage organisation. All of these organisations can also assist you in deciding whether you wish to go down the business advisory services path. The next thing that we think should happen is team members should be interviewed. This will not work unless you've got your team members on side. If for no other reason, then the partners should be delegating virtually all of their compliance work to the team members so that the partners can concentrate on business advisory services, strategic business consultancy, chief financial officer service, etc. So ask your team members what they think about this strategy. ESS BizTools contains special interview forms for the team members to complete. Because what you're trying to do is to identify the team members who could be involved in the delivery of business advisory services. It will not be all of them and some are not going to be suitable for it. Because this brings in some other skills, public speaking, use of uh, PowerPoint slides, being able to run webinars, being prepared to uh, do some studying into the industries that your clients uh, are involved in so that they can talk as an equal uh, about your business because they will understand it. Clients need to be classified. ESS Business Tools uh, has uh, uh, an SME needs analysis which will help you to identify your clients and we have special checklists for going through and working out what is an A and a B class client because the majority of the business advisory services are going to be delivered to your A-class clients and the B-class clients because you want to make them A-class clients. Because at the end of the day, you will be charging more to your clients than what you're currently doing, but you'll be doing a lot more work and hopefully will be adding a lot more value and that's what this is about. Clients don't get uh, very carried away and uh, uh, very enthusiastic about tax returns being done. I can assure you they're a lot more excited about business plans, strategic plans, uh, a proper uh, business health check review than what they ever are on tax returns. But then we need to get some input from the clients. What do they want? <coughs> now every survey that I've conducted for clients, accounting firm client, client, with accounting firm clients, there has been a resounding yes. The clients want business advisory services. And indeed, most of them are quite happy to pay the extra fees. And some of them tell you they were thinking of going to one of the coaching or consulting services because some of their mates are doing it. And they wanted to know uh, why their accountant won't supply those services. But you need to talk to your clients. ESS Biz Tools includes a special client survey form for the client to complete. Our recommendation is that a partner, not the one that normally handles their affairs, interviews the client and completes the survey form with the client or you hire an external consultant, one of the organisations I met, met, mentioned earlier, who can undertake those reviews for you. 
we believe one of the most important things then is to is to uh, classify your clients into industry groups because you're going to have to decide who's going to become the champions in the various industry groups. So if you've got 20 uh, uh, small manufacturers and 50 uh, graziers and 20 uh, normal farmers, um, crop farmers, it's given you a great basis of which to uh, develop some champions within your team who are going to learn something about those industries so they can talk to the clients. And you also need to undertake a financial analysis of your accountancy business. How do you uh, rate at present against your peers? That sort of analysis, that sort of benchmark can be undertaken by uh, FMRC Smithink through the FMRC benchmarking service. And that way you will get a good idea of where you stand at present. One of the other things you need to do in, your, in the financial analysis is to determine a realistic amount of fees that you might lose over the next three years as clients elect not to come back to an accounting firm for their wage earner tax returns. Some of the uh, amount of fees that some accountancy firms are receiving in this area are quite substantial. The tax commissioner um, a few uh, on the 9th of May in the Australian is quoted as saying that the tax office this year have received 2.4 million lodgements electronically. Most of those would be wage earners. And he's anticipating that uh, many more people will go down that path in the next few years. Indeed, the commissioner has been quoted somewhere else as saying there is 4.8 million wage earner returns and he's hoping to get most of them out of a uh, wage earner tax return program by 2013. Just average those out at $100 each for a tax return and you get some idea of the magnitude of the per annum loss in fees that is going to occur to the Australian accountancy and tax office industry. Not all those people are going to retire. A lot of them will want to get further into business and they will be definitely trying to uh, uh, move up the ladder as it were to, to get more SME work. So what you need to work out is how much income you're currently generating from business advisory services work. Most firms aren't doing much if they haven't created the speciality of offering business advisory services. Then you, start to, you need to start thinking what sort of products can be delivered. I'm going to give you a menu of services a little bit later this afternoon, but you don't have to offer all those services and indeed you don't have to offer them from day one. Some of them you can phase in over a period. But one of the very important aspects of this is what do partners really want to do personally? Now, I've conducted a lot of those surveys and found differing views. This is not going to suit every one of your partners. But I believe you need at least one partner in every firm who are electing to go down the business advisory services path who are going to be the chief um, advocate for business advisory services. Otherwise this will uh, die on the vine. We think it's a good idea that after you've done the review that you have a think tank meeting with partners and all of your team to review the results of the team member interviews, to review the results of the client interviews, to review the results of the partner interviews, individual partners, to then um, um, decide whether the firm should be proceeding with um, the offering of business advisory services. And then you need to work out how you're going to develop systems for business advisory services. And in our next two webinars, we'll outline how ESS BizTools uh, products can assist you in doing that. And obviously the partners then need to, to sign off and agree on the implementation of the services. So having done that, we believe you then start to use a SME needs analysis. With permission of FMRC Smith Inc, we have adapted uh, the needs analysis that Andrew Geddes has been using for some time. 
put a bit more detail into it and we've called it the SME needs analysis. We believe one of these needs analysis should be used for every A and B class client. So the general headings are review the current business performance, what tax planning needs to be done, what future planning, and that's obviously covering budgets, cash flows, business plan. What would the client like? What's the client think about wealth creation? Are they happy with the amount of money they're generating? Are they going to have enough money to retire? What do they want to do with their business? If they're going to leave it to a, uh, a child, are they going to have enough money to live off? What risk management areas should be the client looking at? In Australia this year, we've uh, had quite a, a fair reason to an analyse risk management with floods and cyclones and obviously in New Zealand with the uh, earthquake. How good are your client systems if a major catastrophe occurred in, in your client's business? How good are their backup systems? How good are their, uh, their office premises or factory premises? How good is their loss of profits insurance cover? Are the indemnity periods realistic? Many people are starting to find out from the Queensland floods that the indemnity periods are going to be nowhere near realistic. Succession and estate planning. As I mentioned before, in the next 10 years, a large number of the so-called baby boomers in business are going to retire. Surely there's some work that can be done for some of your clients on their succession and estate planning. And what sort of business improvement can you be done? Do they need financial assistance? Do they want to try to get themselves into a position where they can raise some capital or get some significant loan funds from banks? And what other services would they like to receive? And in the SME needs analysis, we've got a list of about 20 other services or 20 services that they may decide they want. So we believe that uh, in looking at a checklist to introduct business advisory services, you need to identify the clients who want business advisory services, which in the main will be your A-class clients. We mentioned industry specialisations. We believe that's very important. So that it's just not someone reading something off a computer screen or off a spreadsheet, but they really know something about the industry. You need st strategies for how you're going to compete in the next three years. Don't leave it to everyone else who's adopted business advisory services because you might find it's too late. There was an interview in uh, a July edition of Business Review Weekly last year of one of the CEOs or the CEO of one of the major uh, tax shops in Australia who said that they had to leave New Zealand 15 years ago when the New Zealand government of the day abolished wage earner tax returns. And that wasn't going to happen to them in Australia because they developed a, a complete SME strategy and they were moving more and more into the SME market. These people are serious competitors. So what are your strategies? We don't suggest you leave it to 2013. We honestly believe you should be starting now. What's your light on the hill strategy in your firm? What would you really like your accountancy business to look like in the next three, five, ten years? Are you offering enough inducement for younger accountants to want to stay in your business and become partners? But you need more than partners. You need people who are going to take on management positions and run the firm. Is your firm an exciting place to work at? Or are they getting uh, dragged down in the drudgery of doing tax returns each day? We think you should continue to offer financial planning services. They're a very important component of what's on offer for clients. One of the very interesting questions is, uh, are you offering proactive services? There's another organisation launched an accountancy business today called Proactive Accountants. We'd already decided on the term proactive services long before I knew that they were using that name. But it's very important that accountants are seen to be proactive. Don't wait for your client to have to come and ask you. 
they're busy people and they are starting to get the belief, in some, in some cases they've always had the belief of course, that the accountant should be contacting them exactly the same way you would do if you were the employed chief financial officer for that client. I can't imagine too many CFOs are not keeping their, their chief executive officer or managing director up to date on a daily basis. Could even be hourly in some businesses. So in looking at business advisory services, some of the issues that you need to look at, which we will be covering in the next two special webinars, your staffing requirements, marketing, how are you going to market business advisory services? Sure, you've got a group of people uh, who are already your clients, but you might want to market it to others. You obviously need to determine which products or services you're going to offer. Training and motivation of the staff is very important. Today we are going to announce a special uh, business advisory services introduction uh, webinars that are going to be run in 20 minute installments from early July for subscribers to ESS Biz Tools to help you go through an actual training motivation of staff and the development of the products, marketing and material to advise clients. You need administration controls. None of this can happen unless someone's administering it all. But probably one of the most important things, I should have put it on the first head of these slides, is strategies for partners to delegate effectively. If you've currently got a fee income of $400,000, I honestly believe that uh, in the next three years you should be generating somewhere between $1.2 and $1.6 million in business advisory services. That won't, will not occur. It will not occur unless partners have effectively delegated or the partner or, or partners who are going to be involved in business advisory services are delegated so that they've got the time to actually run the business advisory services business. And the problem is if you don't do that, we think a lot of firms are going to suffer by um, the, the ongoing competition in the tax return market space. Have partners delegated so they only do these things, high-end work, build relationships with clients and other business partners, plan the new products and services, show leadership to the firm and train and mentor team members. That's what we believe partners should be doing, not doing tax returns. Definitely not doing wage earner tax returns as some partners are still doing. We think it's important that as part of this process there's, there's some skills reviews are done or skills audits with both partners and the team. It's amazing what you find out that some team members have done, especially in the selling area. So what sort of services could you provide? We're listing some of them here. Business health checks, I mentioned that earlier, uh, benchmarking, key performance indicators, what if analysis, prepared specific, specifically for a particular industry, benchmarked against the best performance in that industry, give your clients some real information take them out of the loneliness that many of them are currently in so that they can see how they compare to their peers. Government grants and assistance. ESS Biz Tools will be releasing in about August a separate product on making it far more simpler for accountants to identify government grants and assistance that apply to small businesses in Australia. We'll be telling you more about that later but it's a brand new uh, additional product which will be available to our gold subscribers as part of their subscription and silver subscribers will be able to gain access to it for an additional annual subscription. At this stage we have papers in the system on, um, on government grants but this is a complete system to facilitate identifying grants that might suit a particular kind. Business plans. Business plans are like maps for tourists. Very, very important. Future planning, budgets and cash flow forecasts, cash flow management advice. Time and time again in surveys done with small businesses, 
they are claiming that their biggest problem is cash flow management advice. Accountancy businesses need to make sure they're providing this service, otherwise the clients will go elsewhere. Risk management advice, I referred to that a little bit earlier. Um, we are preparing a whole new uh, uh, module on risk management advice. A lot of it's had to be re-edited after the uh, climate type problems in Australia this year and indeed what's happened in New Zealand, in Christchurch. I was in uh, New Zealand last week for a conference of our, our New Zealand distributor and some of the stories you hear from accountants in Christchurch as to what happened there and the problems that it's caused to their business. How would you like it if you hadn't been able to get back into your business for two months because you were located in the red zone in downtown Christchurch? Real problems. Some people are saying they're very grateful that they were using uh, cloud technology. They wondered how they would have got on in the old days if everything had been in paper. What's your human resources strategies? Can you help your clients in that area? Corporate governance. As more and more clients are using companies, as their businesses grow, uh, more and more of them are wanting to raise capital or get substantial loan funds from banks and other lenders, corporate governance is becoming far more important. Internal audits. Some of your larger clients may uh, want your services for internal audits. Superannuation fund audits. Now many of you may already be doing those and some of you may have elected, of course, you don't want to do uh, audit work of any sort. Succession planning and exit planning. And succession planning is not something that someone should wait till they're 60 to think about. Indeed, succession planning probably should commence from the very early stages of a business because there are some people that like owning uh, six, seven, ten businesses in their career. Well, they should be planning how they're going to get out. Family businesses, exporting, whole area. There are about uh, 50,000 small businesses in Australia export. How many of your clients export? Do you know who exports? Are they claiming an export market development grant? Buying a business, chief financial officer services, strategic management consultancy we've mentioned before, selling a business, step-by-step -step advice as to how to help a client sell their business and get a realistic value for it. Leadership, we have a completely separate module in ESS Biz Tools on leadership written by an ex-colonel in the Australian Ar Army who has got extensive leadership consulting experience. The materials there can be used by ESS Biz Tools subscribers to advise their clients. Capital and loan raising, it's an area that I personally in my consulting business have had a lot of experience in. And then we've got other items which We'll put on the screen, estate planning, business valuations, perhaps using BSTAR's uh, valuation tool, market research. In, in a number of parts of Australia, there's not too many marketers. So accountants might be able to do the preliminary market research information and also develop marketing plans for clients. Dealing with banks, we're also preparing a whole new product which will, uh, we believe, facilitate completing of loan applications for banks. We'll be releasing that in around September. That also will be an additional product, but it will be available free for our gold subscribers. Business networks, how do your clients uh, relate to other businesses? And are they investment ready, the ones that wish to raise capital? And do they need any assistance in information technology? So within ESS Biz Tools, we have produced in the business advisory services a whole range of uh, forms that are obviously available to subscribers to assist in undertaking this initial introductory phase to, re to ascertain whether uh, you wish to proceed down the business advisory service path. So we've got a checklist for the introduction of business advisory services, which is covering many of the matters that I've mentioned today the partner evaluations, the team member surveys, succession planning, attributes of A and B class clients. We also have a checklist for strategies for the C and D class clients because those who are into property investment or those who have a, um, a large share portfolio or some other peculiar circumstances that relate to them, 
may well be people who you're happy to retain. Perhaps in your business you set up a separate division under a manager and offer excellent service to wage earner returns. That's something that each firm needs to consider. There's also a client questionnaire and there's a checklist of potential products and services that you might care to offer. And there's a form to assist you in grouping your clients into industry groups. Because when I go into accountancy businesses and ask them how many uh, clients and how much income they earn from various industry groups, most accountancy businesses cannot tell you. If you're going to decide to become a guru in a particular industry group, then you need to know how much income you're currently generating from that industry group. And we've prepared a template so that whoever's had the responsibility for preparing the report on business advisory services, whether it's a partner or a manager or, in, or an external consultant, uh, can in fact use the template for a report to go back to the partners. And there's also a list of what's in the, what we consider is the work that would come under the definition Chief Financial Officer Services and Street Strategic Management Consultancy Services. In all honesty, we believe that our introductory to business advisory services program gives uh, ESS BizTools clients outstanding material on which they can uh, base their decision whether they wish to proceed down the business advisory services path. And I believe that many of you will wish to do that. So what do you do now? Do you want to be recognised as an energetic business that delivers solutions and helps value add to your clients businesses? We don't think you should be waiting until the accountant down the road's adopted business advisory services and you have to play catch up. What do your team members think? When I do interviews with a lot of accountants around uh, Australia, I find that many of the team members are disillusioned with uh, tax returns. They know tax returns is, is important. They know the income is important for the firm, but they would like to see some variety. They'd like to do, as one lady from Mackay wrote to me, quote, real accounting work, unquote. And I think that's what is important. So ask your team members. What do your clients want? Based on the MYOB survey, of 2004 and to a recent survey that I heard about in New Zealand on last Friday, clients really want business advisory services. And if you don't provide it to them, there is a strong possibility they will go to someone else. And they still may remain your client, but only at, for a tax return. And you may see in the profit and loss account, they've paid someone else twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars for services that your firm could probably have delivered to them. And if you don't tell them about it, they'll probably say, we didn't know you did that. I'll repeat it, we didn't know you did that. Because I've heard that comment from accountants on a few occasions. Are you worried about the work involved? Well, there's a fair bit of work. No, I'm, I'm not going to kid you on that. No gains without pain. There is work to be done. But when the going gets tough, the tough get going. And I think you need to adopt that, get the team involved, develop the champions on various products and industries and encourage the team to get going. It'll take about two to three months of uh, sessions, one to three hours a week, some additional reading by the team members and you should then be ready to start delivering products like Business Health Check. If you haven't already got a product like Profit Optimizer, you probably need to get it because it will uh, do the calculations for a lot of the items that you need to be able to talk about. And it will produce it in a nice format. I sat through a Profit Optimizer training session for one of my accountancy clients yesterday. And the thing that we stress to the younger accountants at the end of it all is whilst this is a wonderful computer tool, at the end of the day when they're talking to their clients, their brain has also got to be fully engaged. So they need to understand the industry. 
they need to understand what these wonderful graphs and spreadsheets are saying. You just can't produce the paper or put it on a computer screen and think the client's going to get a buzz out of it. The client wants to know how that is then going to help to value add to their business. So ESS BIS Tools has developed a full system of tools to assist you in introducing business advisory services. There are also industry expert coaches available, and I've mentioned them earlier. So we have a whole uh, future webinar program built around what we're talking about with uh, business advisory services. And all this has been timed to suit what we think, and please don't laugh, but we think is your downtime in June, July. So I know some of you are going to be having holidays. These webinars are going to be recorded um, and available on our uh, website. But um, we have got a, our next webinar on this area is getting organised for business advisory services, which is on the 1st of June. And for our current subscribers, the material on getting it organised for business advisory services will be on our website by that date. And on the 8th of June, we've got another separate webinar offering business advisory services. So this is when you're totally committed, um, just the final preparation. And by then, our subscribers will have all that material available to them on the website. On the 21st of June, we're just doing a, uh, an overview, bringing those three webinars together in one, just an overview for people on business advisory services with the subtitle, exciting new directions for accountants, because we believe that's what it is. If you become an ESS BizTools subscriber, we'll offer you a free webinar series to guide you in the introduction of business advisory services to your clients. Now, this is free, and we're doing, making this offer for people who subscribe to ESS BizTools uh, over the next uh, two months. But we are then going to run at least 20 20-minute webinars with a question and answer session at the end of each webinar, so total time probably around 30 to 40 minutes depending on the questions. And they will start from around the 12th of July. We'll be um, contacting uh, each of you um, following this e uh, webinar. We'll be able to tell you exactly when they're starting. Oh, there they are, Tuesday the 12th of July at 1 p.m. Places are limited. Subscribe to ESS BIS Tools now um, to be um, eligible to compete in that. Obviously, all of ESS BIS Tools current silver and gold subscribers are eligible, and we'll be contacting um, you people about that in the next couple of days. But anyone else who are uh, visitors to our site today, thanks for participating. We really hope to see you as subscribers so that on the 12th of July, you can start with us as on a journey. Um, this is going to be based on an actual implementation of business advisory services to other accountancy businesses that we've undertaken. So we're going to use the practical benefits we've obtained. Can't run a session like this without having some advertising, so uh, we'd welcome you uh, as subscribers. The ESBIS Tools uh, Silver subscription, which covers all aspects of the business advisory services. First year is $2,640, including GST as the lump sum payment. And there, our, our major products, our gold subscription, which is 5500 including GST. Gold subscribers have a license that they can place any of the ESS BizTools papers on their website and brand them as their own, sell them or distribute them to clients as long as it's through their secure section of their website. What is ESS BIS Tools? Just a, a quick summary. It's a time-saving web-based advisory tool. Contains coaching and mentoring modules, leadership modules, a library with uh, about 440 papers and PowerPoint slides for each paper, which you can use to do your own staff training with it first on a wide range, 57 category headings of matters to do with businesses. 
You can brand those papers and send them to your clients. We produce a special client newsletter. Um, we're currently finalising our second one for this month. Last week we sent out a newsletter on the uh, federal budget as it affected small business. Our normal monthly newsletter goes out tomorrow. And next and on Friday we uh, are sending out our uh, annual end of year tax planning checklist newsletter. There are 35 client seminars already prepared, ready to be used. And there's a whole range of client tools and forms. And there's video tutorials. We think it's a complete package. Thank you for participating. Maya Velocevic, our marketing and sales manager, will answer any of your questions. She'll be contacting you in the uh, next few days. If you've got any queries, please contact us. I don't know whether we've got any questions yet. We'll just have a check. We'll just stay online for uh, about another minute to see if anyone's got any questions they want to ask us today. If, you've got, if you don't want to ask them now uh, and you wish to send us an email, please do so. Or you um, may want to telephone us. Our Web address is on the screen there now. I forgot to bring that up. You've got a toll-free telephone number. And if you've got any email queries, just send them to peter at essbiztools.com.au or maya at maya, M -A -J -A, at essbiztools.com.au. Thank you for participating in this webinar today. I hope you would you, uh, agree with me that uh, Developing business advisory services is a very exciting uh, project for uh, your accountancy business. And if you wish to go down that path, we truly look forward to you becoming a, a subscriber member of ESS BizTools. Thank you very much.